Here's our tale of the tape. Brock Jarvis, 23 years old, 19 and 0, undefeated. He's five foot nine, an inch taller than Alejandro Frias, but it will be Frias who has an inch and a half reach advantage. He's got Frias' back against the ropes. That's where Jarvis likes to do his damage. And this is where Frias doesn't need the size advantage here if he's going to be giving up his, his height like that on the inside. And don't let Frias' 13-4-2 record go. fool you. He's been in there against some pretty good competition. In fact, he's facing his fifth undefeated opponent in his last eight fights. He's only been stopped two times, and most of those fights are to, uh, to undefeated fighters. Scheduled 4-10. Here at Chansey Park. I've been told 12 different ways to pronounce this, Jessica. <laughs> what have you heard? What are you hearing on the street? I like Chick Chansey. All We're right. going to go with that. And the sun is blazing. Nice move right there. Good body oh, shot. Oh, that hurt him. You can yeah. see him reach down, free us, take a deep breath, and those body punches are starting to pile up for Brock Jarvis. That hurt free us because he didn't see that coming. He got an angle. Jarvis oh, a nice got an right angle. hand, and he spun. Jarvis for a second. Even when you get hurt as a fighter, though, you got to have poker face. You can't wince and let your opponent know that they got you. Good shot there by Frias. Over on right. Yeah, Frias has Jarvis's back against the ropes. Big right hand again for Frias. And this Mexican has rocked him. Jarvis up against the ropes. This is an, a disaster for the Australian. He's got to get out of there. He's trying to hold, trying to hold on to him, stop his punches. Show me something. Go. La Ranita, the frog, is rocking Jarvis. The ref is asking him to show him something. He's got to do something fast. What an upset this would be. And Jarvis punching back, doing the right thing. His legs are wobbly. This is only the second Stop round. Side, Jarvis might want to take a knee here before the referee stops it. The doctor's up on the first rope as well. Let's see, Jarvis has never been in this kind of trouble before. Sergio, what's he's he doing his, wrong? He's out on his feet, he's not holding on, and I think Frias is on, he's on the brink of stopping him right here. One Jarvis, more punch. This is incredible, Frias. They didn't even list odds for this fight in Las Vegas. It would have had Watch to be at least 10 to 1. Frias has got to be careful not to outpunch himself here. Jarvis is going to come back. He's going to have a good chance to tire him out. It looks like Jarvis weathered the storm. If he can come back, Frias actually got winded right there. So this is a good opportunity for Jarvis to get his licks in. I think Jarvis just needs to back out, survive the round. He's got 11 seconds left. What seconds, a moment here for Alejandro Frias. These guys are going for it. Every punch is power punches. And what part on Brock Jarvis. Incredible action, and Jarvis survives. Did Frias' moment pass him by? I think that opportunity has come and gone. They've swapped places on the ropes. First Jarvis was on the ropes. Now he's got Frias on the ropes. And it doesn't look like he's getting off anytime soon. Now you see Jarvis doubling up on that left hook. That cut Frias off guard. Come over on the right right there. Otro brazo, suéltalo. Anytime you start doubling down on one side of the body, it breaks the, the repetitiveness. Good left, combination. Good left hook on the inside for Jarvis. Now a right. Frias is starting to shrink a little bit, Jessica. I don't want to say that shoulder again. Frias is shrinking. Anything that you throw, if a fighter is leaning over, you can almost throw blind and just throw to the body, and something's going to hit. Brock Jarvis has the size, the advantage, the double jab and set up that big right hand and that smother his punches, giving the shorter man opportunity to fight the shorter man's fight. But it seems that's exactly what Brock Jarvis enjoys doing. Digging down, taking the fight out of the fighter. It's a long flight to Australia either way, but especially if you suffer your first professional defeat, and Jarvis was just moments away from possibly that happening. Like you said, there's a lot of pressure on Jarvis. He just signed with Matchroom, his U.S. debut. 
got a lot of pressure on his back and he has to perform. Don't go, don't hold him. Go by Digging downstairs is Jarvis. He's still got pop in those punches. Okay, stop, stop. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's and it. they're going to stop it. Brock Jarvis was moments away from having the fight stopped in Frias's favor. Now it's stopped in his favor. Disaster averted for the young Australian. From Chichancy Park here in Fresno, California. Jesse Bam Rodriguez, 13-0 with nine KOs. He's only 21 years old, 67-inch reach. That's two inches shorter than Alejandro Burgos, who is the underdog, but plenty of experience, and he thinks he can pull off the upset. He is 18-4-1 with 15 knockouts. Rodriguez with his fourth fight in California, first time in Fresno. He's fought in Texas, California, Nevada, and Mexico. Get back, pull up. I'd like to see more jabs, more crisp, fast jabs from Rodriguez. He's, he's, he's in there with Burgos, who's West fighting him. He's looking for the right combinations, but he can break the tempo with some nice jabs. Rodriguez well, can. Watch your you know, feet, we're, we're talking about Jesse Rodriguez being a young fighter, 21. Burgos not exactly old himself. He's just 26. So you like to think he has plenty of miles left on his tires. But he has struggled recently. He's won two and one in his last four fights after winning 17 of his first 19 fights. Rodriguez has a very tight guard. Everything to the body is missing. Everything to the head is missing. It, not all fighters can do that. They open up and then they stay open, drop the hands to the, to the chest, not the chin. He's doing a great job on defense. Catching and countering everything, yep. Rodriguez. How's a free gentleman? Step back and punch. Mano Libres. Right hand to the body for Burgos. One, two for Bam. Round four of 10. Jesse Rodriguez in the white trunks. Jose Burgos in the black. Getting right back on that jab, like you said, Sergio. That's that's the only thing I want to see a little bit more of. But, you know, when, when you're that athletic with your lower body and, and, and you're so shifty getting getting those angle, angles and pivoting, you know, you forget about the jab. Oh, nice inside left hand. And that wobbled Burgos oh. a little bit. His foundation, yeah, seems to be destabilized. And they're calling for the storm. A left hand buckles the knees, and down goes El Nino. Rodriguez Cinco. caught an angle and caught him with that left-right combination Siete. that Bugos did not see coming. Estás bien? Estás bien? Como te llamas? Okay. Let's see what kind of finisher Bam Rodriguez is. Burgos seems to be sitting there waiting. Easy prey. Rodriguez pushing the pedal down. Keeping good distance to make sure he gets those long punches off and he's not being held, but now he's holding on for dear life. Yeah, the referee taking a really good look at Burgos right now as he backs up to the ropes again, keeps his hands down. And there it was again. They'll wave it off. A good stoppage. It's over. Jesse Bam Rodriguez with his 14th win and his 10th knockout. He missed that straight left hand right there, but he got that angle, and this is the shifty angles that I'm talking about. Once he gets a position, boom, he caught him with the right uppercut, that left hook that came around the guard of Burgos. You can't get hit that solidly in the chin and expect to get up and fight. Not forgetting the body, Bam Rodriguez, and Raul Caiz almost falling over Burgos there, but doing the right thing, stopping this fight. So, we... Now get the WBO Light Flyweight Championship of the World underway. It is our tale of the tape. La Puga, only 24 years old, five foot three, an inch taller than Gonzalez, and he will also enjoy a two-inch reach advantage scheduled for 12 rounds. I think one thing to watch as this fight moves forward is if Gonzalez is in the kind of condition to be able to do this over the course of 12 rounds. He's moving around a lot in this ring uh, through the first two plus rounds. I he's gonna he, have to keep moving to be successful. I think he, he's nice and comfortable doing what he's doing. He, he's not moving out of, but out this of is fear his, or this nervous is style, right? That's his style, yeah. exactly. So it's not like he's nervous or running away. He's boxing, he's comfortable in there. He's fighting, he's boxing his, his fight right now. 
And yesterday at our fighter meetings, Elwin Soto said, listen, he's going to be the matador and I'm going to be the bull. How did that sit with you, Chris? Well, I mean, I think he's probably right in how this fight, he thinks he's, this fight's going to play out, you know? We're, Gonzalez is going to be just moving around. He's going to try to get to it. Yeah, he gave us a good quote. He said, I may be the flea, but I got the power of the bull. So right now he's looking for the, to track down the matador. I'd much rather be in the position of Gonzalez at this point of the fight. It might change, but at this point of the fight, halfway in, you know, I like I like the way he's moving. I like the look in his eye. Yeah, see, I, I go the other way. He's fighting an excellent fight so far, but I go back to the energy it has to take to fight this way, to keep a pressure fighter like Soto off you. The second Sergio, he becomes a little more stationary, that's when Soto's going to get his shots in. And that's Gonzalez's problem right now. He can be winning this fight, but he can get knocked out with one shot because he keep he lingers that chin up in the air a little bit too high. Right now he got caught with a left hook because he didn't tuck that chin in while he pivoted away. So nice even in, even in a fight that he's winning, he has to watch out the entire the entire minute of every round because he just keeps that chin up and neglects tucking it in. You wonder how soon frustration might set in for Elvin Soto as he looks like Rocky Balboa chasing that chicken around the yard. He's having some success in this uh, this last minute right now, landing some good shots. I think he's finally found, he's tracking down Gonzalez. And it's a big difference to tell your fighter it's close rather than, hey, you're probably losing. I would think that would turn your ears up even more. No, they said this fight is close. You got to let go. Listen, you got to let go and stop. Listen to me. That's good to me. And you can't jump up with your shoulder like that. You're going to hurt him. All right, accept that. You okay? See, there's Soto being demonstrative again because he's trying to get the attention of Jack Reese about the holding he believes Gonzalez is doing during this fight. That now is the second warning towards Gonzalez. A third could lead to a point taken away, which could be the difference in a close fight. A left to the body for Gonzalez. And a right hand connects for Soto. And Gonzalez slips out again. Soto landed a good right hand, but Gonzalez came back with his own left hook. Yeah, I'm really impressed by the conditioning of Jonathan Gonzalez. Here we are in round number nine, and he's not breathing out of his mouth. He's not looking tired in between rounds in the corner. He looks like he can keep this up for the next three plus rounds. Stop, 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 stop. Time out, time out, time out. What happened there? No, 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 just relax. Stay there. Stay right here. It looked to me Elwin. like Soto Elwin. pulled Mo, on the sucio. arm you're of sucio. Gonzalez. I saw you twist that arm. Don't do that mierda. Okay. No mas. Okay. Comprende? Okay. Comprende. Points. All right? Okay. Get over there. That's all frustration Listo. on Elwin Soto Listo. right there. Okay. Yeah, that was definitely a twist Start that clock from Elwin Soto's right arm to, to Jonathan Gonzalez's okay. left, kind of bending it in the wrong direction. And good eye by Jack Reese, the referee, catching that, because that could so, be dangerous. Mark, it's getting a little rough inside, holding and twisting, and he it grabbed his arm and twisted a little bit. I think he's playing, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Okay? Okay, <laughs> let's go. Let him, let him show. Box. I think he's playing. Hey, you can't play boxing. Isn't that what they say, Chris? I, hey, I think he's been acting. Trying to milk it a little bit. Fifteen seconds to go. Oh, and a left hand, a good one. One of the best punches in the fight scores for Gonzalez. Do we have a new light flyweight champion? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Fresno, California, we go to the judges' score totals. Daniel Sandoval. 116, 112, La Pulga, Elwin Soto. Zachary Young, 116, 112, Jonathan Gonzalez. 
and Robert Hoyle scores this contest 116 to 112 for your winner by split decision. And the new WBO Life Highweight Champion of the World, Jonathan Bomba Gonzalez. How about that reaction? Look what it means to him, Jonathan Gonzalez is the champion at world, the world champion at flyweight. Mark Castro, as Chris Mannix mentioned earlier, grew up about five minutes down the road from this stadium, 22 years old. He's three inches taller than Luna and will enjoy a four inch reach advantage, only scheduled for six rounds, super featherweights. Mark Castro in the green trunks, Angel Luna from the Dominican Republic in the white and red. Oh, and right away, Castro with three clean shots. Luna didn't even try to attempt to, to block those shots or evade those shots. Three solid shots by Castro to start off the round. Let me say this, Sergio. If we saw great footwork from Jonathan Gonzalez in the last fight, Luna, not so much. His <laughs> feet have been planted for the majority of the first 30 seconds. He's getting hit with everything already. Already buckled and shook, Luna is. He looks confused. Is he going to throw a punch? I don't see Luna getting out of this round. He's just getting hit way too cleanly. Sergio, most fighters you see on their toes. I'm, I'm looking at Luna's feet here. They have not come on his toes the entire time. Maybe all the hoopla before this fight got into his head a little bit. I mean, he looks like he's in shape. He's muscular, but we all know that muscles don't win boxing fights. Thank God for you, huh? <laughs> Good left hook right there by Castro. See Castro not, I already see a, a, a little change in Castro. He's not smothering himself. He's not going eager. Everything's landing, but he's taking his time. Well, Luna has the body of Iris Landy Lara, but the skills of Glass Joe. <laughs> and you, this guy went the distance with Tevin Farmer? He did. Oh, that's, a, that's a bad look for Farmer because right now <laughs> Castro can't even miss. Jab from Castro. Everything's working though. You know, Castro's a young fighter, makes plenty of mistakes, but this is not the type of opponent that's going to last long. Late reaction knockdown there. Like I said, I don't see it going past this first round. Everything landing cleanly for Mark Castro. Can it seguir? Can it or no? Dame lo guante. Necesito pelea or I'm stopping it. You comprende? Yeah. Box. Necesito pelea. This is not going to be pretty, guys. Yeah. This is the beginning of the end. Enjoy it while it lasts. Mark Castro is lighting Luna up. Jack Reese is very close to stepping in. And that is it. That is it. Mark Castro. Win number four, knockout number four. It will be the easiest win of his professional career. Easiest win, but it's a good look for the young kid and rising star in his hometown to shine like this. Even though Luna, it looked like something affected him. He got caught lit way too early, but this was just a, this is exactly what you want to see from a young prospect and future star, Mark Castro. Just shine and get, go to the next one. My question to you, Chris, is how did he win 14 fights? Duck fighting like that, that's for sure. 8,000 fans strong here in Fresno to see one of the best in the world in the flesh, Mikey Garcia. 40 and one, that one loss coming to Errol Spence Jr. Of course, he's got 30 knockouts. He's 33 years old at the end of his prime, perhaps looking at that age. Sander Martin says he's never felt better, best camp of his life, and he is uber confident. Chris mentioned Mikey Garcia's lack of activity. He's fought just seven times since January 2014. And this is his first fight in 20 months. Yeah, a little bit different circumstances this time around. Ooh, nice shot there on the inside from Sander Martin. Caught Garcia coming in. Oh, that was Mikey coming in first. He landed that straight. I believe it was a right hand to the jaw. Good counter by Martin, but he got clipped in the jaw first. Has 
hasn't lost since Anthony Yajit beat him in September of 2017. Nine straight wins. That was a firefight with uh, Anthony Yajit. I, I really enjoyed watching that fight. He showed that off. Uh, Martin Kenny shot on the inside from Garcia as he starts to let his hands go. But Martin caught him coming in again. That was a good right hook by Sando Martin. Caught Mikey coming in right there nicely. And this is what we're talking about, Chris. Ma Sando Martin's not a power puncher, but he is a crisp puncher. You gotta respect this pop. You can hear the sound of those when they're landing on Garcia's body. Garcia with a 75% knockout ratio, 30 KOs in his 40 wins. Sander Martin with 13 KOs in his 38 victories. Nice move off the ropes by Sando Martin right there. Not staying on the ropes long enough for Mikey Garcia to get any kind of confidence of landing anything. You know, as you start thinking about the scorecards here, it's only a 10 round fight. Mikey Garcia can't wait too long to get aggressive on Sando Martin. Blood trickling on the top of the nose of Mikey Garcia right now. As Martin again escapes danger in the corner. And Martin has managed to take this crowd completely out of the fight. Haven't heard a big roar yet, and we're in round five. The drums are going fast, and you know, Mikey Garcia, like, like we like to say, he, he likes to take his time to figure out his opponent, but right now we're halfway through in a 10-round yeah. fight left hand for Mikey Garcia there. And it's set up by a, a left hand to the body that caught Martin pulling out, which is what I noticed when I was watching Martin. He pulls out with his head up in the air. That's part of his kickboxing background. It's very difficult to make that transition from kickboxing to boxing, or MMA to boxing for that matter, especially when it comes to footwork, as Garcia is trying to rough Martin up in the corner. He caught his attention early in this exchange with two right hands. Now he's got him exactly where he wants him to be. Putting all his weight now on Martin. See, this is exactly what, what we needed to see from uh, Soto in the last fight. When you can't, you can't pin down your opponent, a southpaw opponent, you just got to hit, hit him at the body, trap him and get the opportunity and bang away at the shoulders and the biceps, which is what Mikey Garcia is doing now. Chris, you said you didn't expect to see any ring rust from Garcia. How would you describe his performance from it so far? It's hard to tell if there's any ring rust or if it's just Sandro Martin fighting a very good fight. But Mikey Garcia has not, clearly not looked as good as we've seen him look in many of his previous I think it's the latter, Chris. I think I'm impressed with Sandro Martin and, and how he's following his game plan, getting his respect, check, check hooking, like right there. He, he barely missed with that check right hook, but Mikey Garcia, he's leery of that. He's throwing the right shot, Martinez, and he's throwing him some good pop. There's a right hook again. Good work out of the corner and off the ropes for Sandor Martin, who may have won another round. This is supposed to be a celebration. I mentioned earlier they're shooting off fireworks as he made his way to the ring like the fight was already won. Instead, Mikey Garcia may be on the receiving end of one of the biggest upsets in recent memory here in boxing. Look at the copy box numbers, punches in round eight. Only three landed punches for Mikey Garcia. And you talk about him not being able to figure out uh, Martin. Mikey Garcia, 41 pro fights. He's been in there with Robert Easter Jr., Sergey Lipinitz, Juan Manuel Lopez, Orlando Salido, Jesse Vargas, Adrian Broner. Why can't he figure this guy out? Well, Martin is a, the real deal, and he's following the game plan like he told us. I mean, he said, I'm going to school Mikey Garcia, and right now it looks like he is doing the schooling because he's fighting like a southpaw, clinching when he needs to clinch, getting away from the ropes like he did right there, and getting the clean shots on Mikey Garcia. Hey. Martin was a 10 to 1 underdog, and now finally Garcia scores with the right hand, and Martin says, I'll stand and trade with you for a minute. 
He doesn't want to do that, though, does he, Sergio? No, Chris actually, I, li I like the fact that he's doing that. Just don't get too much because you got the respect of Mikey Garcia boxing. Now you got to get the respect of him fighting. But then get back on the bike, just like that. Cracked him again. What would a loss here tonight do to Mikey Garcia's legacy? I don't know if it has an effect on his legacy. It it would put really? him in a position to need, need a to look nobody up. from Spain that we had to look up on Wikipedia to find out who he was. Coming off a 20-month layoff, not that it gives him a pass at all, but if there is a rematch, and again, I have no idea what these judges are going to see in this fight, but if he has a chance to avenge it and does, you kind of move past it. But right now, not a good look for Mikey Garcia. A great look for Sando Martin, I'm telling you right now. Oh, this is life-changing, life-changing. If this goes his way, life changer for Sandro Martin. He puts himself, he's already put himself on the world level, guys. Like, he belongs on this stage. And now meets Mikey Garcia. Look, a little banter there from, from Martin. Telling Mikey Garcia, you're not hurting me. 30 seconds to go. No real desperation, Sergio, at all these last couple there of rounds. There is not, and it seems like Sandro Martin caught. wants to close the show. Punching back with that right hook, Martin. What a night for Sandor Martin as he just beaten Mikey Garcia. Viva España. I think he just might have pulled it off, guys. Let's make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here in Fresno, we go to the judges' score totals. Zachary Young, 95, 95 even. Fernando Villarreal and Carla Caiz both scored them out 97 to 93 for your winner by majority decision. El Orgullo de Barcelona, Catalonia, España. From obscurity to beating one of the biggest names in boxing. Sergio, please put this into perspective. I love boxing. I love exactly what I've just seen right here because no one, including ourselves, believed in this man. When you asked me how does he win this fight, I had no answer for you. Sandor Martin was not only confident, he pulled up the strategy to perfection, fought to the end, and he pulled it off. The judges got it right. Viva España.